Look, I was excited to be here to talk basketball, but the world has dramatically changed in the last 48 hours. Chuck, it was a very different 48 hours. Your thoughts? Well, uh, I sit there and watch that, and I was, I was in shock. Like, like, wow, this is the United States, and they're storming the Capitol. And I blame everybody in the Capitol. That's who I blame. I blame that fool up there in D.C. who's the president, first and foremost. But these, these politicians have divided this country into Republicans, Democrats, uh, conservative, liberal, and they have destroyed our country. We can't have a civil debate anymore. Uh, you got to be on one team or the other team. You know, it's like this election down here in Georgia. I'm sitting, I've been coming here the last couple of weeks now like, well, if we don't put two Democrats or two Republicans in there, it's going to end the world. I'm like, are you serious? You, they're going to disagree that much, the greatest country in the world, that it's going to come down to two <clears throat> people or all hell's going to break loose. Uh, it, it, our political system has become a joke. Uh, I, 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 I'm not a fan of the president, but I blame those people who were in the Senate and the House because they have divided this country to the point where one vote is going to dictate whether one party gets screwed or the other party gets screwed. And that ain't right. So I blame them. The president has made it fashionable and cool to be a, a bigot. He's made it very cool to be a bigot. Uh, but I blame <clears throat> the people who they storm for the situation we're in today. Mm. Kenny. Well, I, I think we've, we've all heard a lot of different people talk about, uh, you know, the privilege. We've talk, we heard talk about, you know, comparing it, don't compare it to protesters. As Ed Draymond said, we've heard all those different things. But I think people who, who follow our show and watch me, they know that I, I try to analyze the situation and not always have the first emotion, emotional response. Because in the first emotional response, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised that it happened. I, I know Charles said it. I'm not surprised. I, that I've, I've been at dinner tables, was tables where we said, man, if this happens, they're going to storm the Capitol or they're going to burn the White House down. I think every black family has heard that kind of phrase. Sure. Before. So we, we, we understand that. But what this is really about, and I think this is important to get a million dollars worth of game, so to speak, is it's, you know, what were they angry about? The vote. See, we, they want us to divert to the storming. They're, they're angry. The things that we protest against were about life and death, about, you know, citizens of life and death of black and brown people. They're angry because of the vote and was willing to list, uh, <clears throat> risk four people's lives for that and was willing to list, risk being incarcerated behind the vote. So that's important for us to understand how important <clears throat> that is to people like that in that time of uh, mind frame. So the vote is the most important, which leads to what? Group e economics, which then leads to systematic racism. That's why they were climbing the walls. They weren't climbing the walls. You have to go back to why they were mad. Because in Georgia, it became a blue state. In California, they're voting now. Oh, well, if you get out of, if you, if you, if you're a, a, a federal, if you come out of prison, you're now to vote now. You know, those are the things that are systematically changing the country, you know. So, <clears throat> million dollars a game. <laughs> Realize why they were angry and not the emotion of what happened. And say, now arm your kids with education, arm your kids with voting, arm your kids with group economics, because those are the things that people are dying over and start the triple, trickle effect of you getting shot in the street, defund the police, <clears throat> thought process, all those mm -hmm. things. Remember why they were angry. Mm -hmm. It's obviously we saw an attack on our country, an attack on our democracy. But for all the people that sit back and, 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 and think in 2022 that there is no white privilege, you saw it yesterday. If you have to ask yourself, what if that was black people? You know there's a problem. Uh, you know, we, we protest, we chant, we do this. We get beat up. They call the National Guard. We have the courage to say, we come in Wednesday. We come on coming on Wednesday. And what do you do Tuesday night? You call the National Guard. You have them stand there at the steps. We marching, we doing whatever, we still get beat up. You got these cats, the privileged cats, they, they run in, in the Capitol, which is not supposed to happen, and they get to do, do what they want. 
and it's still going on. It's unfortunate that it's still going on, but you know, the good thing about us is we're starting to make changes. So now the people that we're making change with, they, they have a job to do. They have the job to make sure things start to turn around and, you know, become how we want it. You know, I'm, I'm disappointed that I saw that. But my thing is, how you let this guy get in Nancy Pelosi's office... Put his feet up. ...and go like this? How does that happen? And you can't let a brother just come up to one cop and, and say one thing without getting mace, billy club, or anything. So that's what white privilege is for all the people that sit back and act like, oh, there's no white privilege. We have a couple of CEOs. We have one or two black billionaires. There's, you know, we've, we've come a long way. Well, we haven't come long enough. I think it's important to remember the history that got us here, 1877 the compromise of 1877 and that electoral crisis when all the soldiers were pulled from the South and it ended Reconstruction and that instituted Jim Crow. And we have lived in that state and it's gotten better, but we're still trying to fix that moment. And hopefully this is the beginning of fixing that moment because that history has lived with us here in America. And I propose, are we going to break? Okay. We're, I propose. Go ahead. You know, because, Kenny, we come from certain neighborhoods where people have to do what they do, right? Nonviolent, get caught with a bag. They get 20, 30 years, right? They got to do what they got to do. They're, they're, they're nonviolent. They've, you know, exhausted every option. Not smart enough to get a scotch or whatever, but they see opportunities to drop off a bag and get paid. They get caught. They get 25, 30 years. So all them people that storm, storm the little capital, they should get 25, 30 years. They should get harsh sentences for doing what they did. And sure. there have been a multiple arrests already. They are yeah, identifying those people who yeah, reached I, the Capitol. I want to see 25, 30 years. 